does a nice job of showing you why they work and proving the identities themselves. What we're going to do is actually use the identities to find angles that we might not have been able to find the sine or cosine of otherwise. So that's why we're only applying some of the different identities to sines and cosines. <coughs> Your book has some of the different identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. I don't bother to give you tangent. The reason for not bothering to give you tangent is that you can always find tangent by doing the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. So if you just have these two that you're used to using, you can always use find the other one. Now, how do we read these identities? Well, your book likes to write them this way. So that's why we stuck them here. This is really two identities. One of them is for the sine of an angle plus another angle. And that's equal to the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle plus the sine of the second angle times the cosine of the first angle. Notice in each piece there's a sine and a cosine, but the angle that you put in after the sine and the cosine switches. So if the sine is above the addition, is it addition? Right, so in sine, if it's addition here, it's addition here. If it's a subtraction here, it's subtraction here. And the cosine, now notice, here I have plus on top, minus on bottom. When you come over here, the minus is on the top, the plus is on the bottom. You use the top ones. So if you have addition here, you're going to use subtraction here. If you have subtraction here, you're going to use the bottom sign here, or the addition sign. It wasn't turned over just for fun. It needed to work that way. Now, why do we care? Well, most people don't, so. But we're going to still do the problems anyway. This is going to allow us to find sines and cosines of angles that we might not have been able to find before. For example, use a sum or difference identity to find the exact value of the sine of pi over 12. Well, your calculator can tell you this, but it won't be an exact answer. But we can find an exact value, and occasionally it's helpful to be able to find exact values as opposed to close values. Basically, what I need to do is I need to take pi over 12 and write it as either the sum or difference of things that I know. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not really good at coming up with exactly the best ones for this. So here's what I usually do. What angles do we know? Pi over 6? Pi over 4? Pi over 3? Any others? We know pi over 2. Pi. And basically any of them related to this. We know pi. Now what I'm interested in getting is something over 12. So what I want to do is I want to take all of the ones that I know and rewrite them so that they're over 12. So pi over 6 is what when I do make it over 12? 2 pi over, two pi over 12. What's pi over 4 when I make it into something with a denominator of 12? 3 pi over 12. What about pi over 3? 4 pi over 12. Pi over 2? 6 pi over 12. And pi is obviously 12 pi over 12. Now, can you see any pair of these that I could either add together or subtract from each other to end up with pi over 12? 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. So what he's just told me is I've got two angles that I can subtract. So, and I'm looking for sine, right? So I'm going to be looking for the sine of 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. Basically what I have just done is rewritten the angle that I was given in terms of the difference of two angles that I know. So to make this a little simpler, this is the sine of pi over 4 minus pi over 6, because those are the ones that I recognize them. Now, according to the formula, what should this be? According to the identity that you wrote down a minute ago, hopefully. Difference. It's a difference one, so what was it, what did I have? Oh, wait. It's sine, a sign. Um, um, sine of a. So, the sine of the first angle, so sine of pi over 4. And then what? Um, cosine. Cosine? Um, of the second angle, so that's pi over 6. Notice I don't have the negative sign.
sign here, the negative sign comes in. It's <coughs> telling me that I do what now? Subtract, and what do I subtract from that? Sine of the second angle, so sine of pi over 6. And the cosine of the first one, so cosine of pi over 4. Now, I know what the sine of pi over 4 is, yes? You should. What is it? Radical 2 over 2. Notice that once I come up with this, the word sine is gone. What is the cosine of pi over 6? Everybody okay with that one? Square root of 3 over 2? I think so. All right. Minus. What's the sine of pi over 6? 1 half. And what's the cosine of pi over 4? Square root of 2 over 2. So when I put them all together, I will have the square root of 3 times the, I mean, excuse me, square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which is square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4, which I can simplify to be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. How much more do you really want to simplify it? So, here's the one problem though. Because web work has, web work can actually calculate this without do, you doing anything. So to avoid that, let me stop showing the slideshow for a moment and move to the web work problems. They end up putting their equation, they, give you like a template like they were doing for the others of what the equation ought to look like. So the template for this equation would probably be, let's see, I would expect it's going to be the square root of A times the square root of B minus 1 over 4. That would be my guess. What would this A be if this were the template? Would it be 6? Now, if you look at how this is different from what I have here, this square root of a is factored out. So if I were to put it back in, when I multiply the square root of a times the square root of b, I should get 6. Square root of 6. And when I multiply the square root of a times 1, I should get the square root of 2. So that means a should be not the square root of 2 because the square root's in the symbol. So it should just be 2. So the A part should just be 2. What, the, what should the B part be? Three. The 3 that you would have needed. So it would have probably up here it would have been easier to see if I hadn't multiplied them together. That's not always, it depends on how they want to do them. If this were on a test, it's not on test 3, it's on the final. I would be perfectly okay if you got to here and then stopped. <coughs> You've shown me that you know what to do. You don't have to keep putting them more together, doing the multiplication. I mean, you know how to multiply. 